Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request from my friend Efri. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. Also, do have a Cash App as well for those interested. Just people have asked. Links are down in the info box. It could be any review, re review, topic, reaction, commentary, video game playthrough. Whatever the case may be, I'll get to it as soon as I can. And today is a film called Stream for Help from 1984, which I know he's seen. Because he told me about it quite a while ago. So I guess now he wants to hear my thoughts on this. And I don't think he was a fan of the film. And I don't blame him because this film sucks. It sucks. Somehow it got a Blu-ray from Stream Factory, which is directed by Michael Winner, who did Death Wish 1, 2, and 3. I like Death Wish 2 and 3, especially 3. Horror films are not his forte, and you, you could clearly tell with this movie. Tom Holland, not Spider-Man, but Tom Holland, the writer who did Cycle 2, Cloak and Dagger. Apparently, he was going to work with that director again, Richard Franklin, who did those two films. On this one, does Richard Franklin know uh, he also did Road Games, great movie, great movie, great film with Stacey Teach and Jamie Lee Curtis. I say Cycle 2 is great, it's my favorite of that franchise. Cloak and Dagger, I honestly have not seen in like 20 years, so I don't remember much about it. I know Venator Syndrome did a big release for it. Stars the, I think it stars the kid who was in E.T., I believe. But, yeah, apparently Richard Franklin was going to direct this, but he's like, eh, I don't know about this, you know. Which, I mean, I can't blame him, but I, I don't know if I could blame the script. Because Tom Holland is, he, he hates this movie. Apparently, I don't know this, but apparently on that Blu-ray, there's an interview with him. They completely shits over this movie. I know he hates the film because he said later, the reason I went to write, well, I was a writer, the reason I directed Fright Night was I don't want my script to be ruined like Stream for Help was. Because <laughs> he, ob he obviously liked working with Richard Franklin on films like Psycho 2, but again, this was a huge bomb. People didn't like it for good reason. And again, Tom Holland hated it, and he's like, you know what, I'm directing the movies myself that I'm writing. So he had Fright Night, Ch uh, he did a kind of a little rewrite on Child's Play. Stream for Help uh, is kind of what I wanted to do in the middle of this movie, so I didn't watch it anymore, but I did finish it. But you will want to Stream for Help after how shitty it is. So the 17-year-old girl, right off the bat, okay, from the beginning I knew I was in trouble. Because the music sounds like an over-dramatic after-school special. From the 1970s. And this is 84. Every piece of music is wrong. The wrong sense of scale over dramatic there's one moment where he, she hears her mom having sex with the stepdad and the music becomes like gone with the wind there's another bit where the stepdad is chasing her and her female buddy and the music sounds like an episode of charlie's angels there's a bit where she's following her stepdad in a car she's on a bike he's in a car she's following him and that's like a 70s cop show music. And the way it ends, like the store, it just... Or... Nothing about it feels like thriller, feels like horror, sounds like it. And this feels like a rejected TV movie from the 70s. Because other than a few bits of nudity, one or two little bits of violence, 
it's not too hardcore of a movie. And then, again, yeah, the, the music is completely overdramatic. And from the get-go, you literally, with this lead girl, and she goes, My stepdad wants to murder me and my mom. No build-up. No character build-up. We're right there. We don't know who you are. We don't know who the stepdad is. We don't know who anybody is. And then there are times like she's trying to narrate this. I might like, think you, Miss Fucking Clarissa, explains it all. And right from the get go, she hates her stepdad. Now, it would have been nice to know as to what made her think this in the first place, because she says it. Then she's like, well, let me tell you, you know, how I came to this conclusion. But then when it's telling you that, she's already gun to and hating him, despising him. I'm like, okay, it's because the guy's not her dad. But at the same time, even with that being the case, you don't automatically think, oh, he's a murderer who's going to kill us. But there is no build-up. There is no, like, gradual realization of oh my god this guy is a horrible terrible person and the acting whether it be Rachel Kelly as the lead Christie or David Allen Brooks as Paul the stepdad the acting is god awful awful it was like this film was cast wrong it was directed wrong it was it's kind of like how Joss Whedon said about Alien Resurrection where he wrote the script, and he said he saw the film, but he's like, it's my script, but he, they did everything wrong. <laughs> that, that's the case here. Rachel Kelly, I don't think, went on to do much, which makes sense, because she was not that talented in this movie. Neither was the guy who played the stepdad. It's like, if you want to see a better version of this movie, wait a few years, you do the stepfather with Terry O'Quinn. I'm not a big fan of the actress Jill Sholin in that movie, but she was better than this girl. In that movie, she was better than this girl. I'm sorry, if somehow this girl sees this, I'm sorry, maybe Michael Winner, which I've heard he's not the best director with actors, especially with women. I know like Marina Sirtis, who was later Deanna Troy in Star Trek Desperation. She had such a bad experience working with the director. She said, I know I'm not supposed to speak ill for the dead, but I hope he's burning in hell. I don't think Troy, you know, Deanna Troy had a good time working with the guy. <laughs> so apparently a lot of women, and also stump people, they hated Michael Winter as a terrible director. Terrible behavior. That might have been the case here, because this was, I think, before Death Wish 3. Because this was 84, then Death Wish 3 was 85. So probably had abhorrent behavior. I don't know if any of these actors experienced it. And the fact this has a Blu-ray with features kills me, man. There are films I don't even have a DVD, but this has a Blu-ray with features. But what did you do? Acting sucks. Terrible lead. Overzealous music. No build-up of the story. Automatically, boom. Oh my god, this guy wants to kill us. And no one believes her. Should they think she's crazy? I'm like, we the audience might as well think she's crazy too because there's been no... How did you suspect this guy was doing things? Like, even the flashback, she's like talking with her friend and her friend's boyfriend who... I recognize him. He's the guy who played Pete in Friday the 13th Part 5. Remember in that movie, one of the greaser guys in the car is like, Go kick your ass! You didn't start. Go kick your ass. Which he was actually fun in that movie. For it's, He was in, what, 40 seconds? And <laughs> he made an impression. Sally, is, he's not as good in this, but I maybe it's the way he was directed. I don't know. But right from the get-go, she's telling her friends... Oh yeah, he's a killer. And it's like, well, how do you know? Or he's going to try to kill us. Like, how do you know? There's there's no build up. There's no clues. Then a guy gets uh, fried. 
supposed to be an accident, but she thinks he did it. He caused it. Because it's supposed to be a trap meant for a mom, but the maintenance worker or someone got to it first. And he got accidentally fried. <clears throat> and not a whole lot happens for a good chunk of the movie. It's her trying to be Nancy Drew, trying to be Cl you know, Miss Clarissa, trying to explain it all. Riding on her bike to follow the stepdad. The stepdad is cheating on her mom. She tells the mom. The mom doesn't believe her. She needs a car. She wants her friend to drive her in her a car. Or the one guy. I know the actor's name is Corey. Again, the guy from Friday Five. Wants Corey to drive her in the car. Her, again, her mom doesn't believe her. At one point, she hears her mom having sex with the stepdad. Again, the music becomes like Dawn with the Wind. The stepdad will see our lead and her female bud and run after them, stop. And then, while our two characters are talking, again, the spoilers, right now spoilers, you find out that the, the bud, the best bud, is pregnant. And almost as soon as you find out the information, well, maybe like five minutes later or so, she gets hit by a car, hit and run, she dies. So, I guess that's something. Telling a pregnant woman, they don't do that in every movie. So, of course, she's sad, and then she's talking with her best friend's boyfriend, and he's sad because it was his kid. And his girlfriend. And within the same day. I swear. It was like the same day. Same night. Or was it the next day? It felt like the same day. They have sex. Because she's a virgin. And she wants. Who Poontain punched. Punched down. Punched out. Punched whatever. Punch drunk love. He does it. She bleeds. She's like, yeah, I never want to have sex again. Just can't blame her if you have sex and you're bleeding. Probably wouldn't want to have sex for a while either. I mean, how the hell is this happening within a day? Like, you got over your girlfriend and your unborn baby dying in one day? Or maybe two? You couldn't put it like a week? Did you need this to be a love story? Could you be like friends? Was that part of the script, Tom Holland? If so, I, I gotta call you out on the strip then. I love you, Tommy, but if, if that was part of your strip, like, come on, dude, really? Within the same day? Unless it was changed. I don't know, was the strip changed? So finally, she follows the step that's successful. Oh, there's two nudity scenes. There's one where we, we see her friend. It was a bit weird because she's supposed to be a 17 year old because she's supposed to be the same age as our lead. But obviously these actors are played by people in their 20s or so. For that reason. So that's why I can't blame them for looking older. Because I don't want to see a 17 year old's tits. 21, 22? Okay. A little bit more fine with that. <laughs> but it's supposed to be the same. And then the other one is the stepdad cheating on the mom with this other woman, you see the woman's titties. I think you see them twice, actually, throughout the film. She takes a Polaroid, which, is that, that's not really the best camera to use when you're trying to sneak, take a pic. Let me do that where it will make a big <laughs> flash and make that sound. Here's a Polaroid. What's that? You might as well have one of those damn 1920s thing. We do. You might as well have one of those. To take a picture. But she, and she drops the Polaroid too. She tries to get it back. He uh, realizes that the woman who is with the stepdad and the cheating thing 
this guy who the stepdad thinks is the brother, they're a couple as well. Because that couple, man, that, that man and woman couple, when things go haywire, when the stepdad kills the mom and the daughter, these two will blackmail the stepdad so that they can get the money. But the stepdad doesn't know that they're an item. He thinks they're brother and sister. So there's three people in on the steam. And some of the dialogue... I, sorry about that edit. Apparently I was so mad I tipped my damn desk and it unplugged the damn camera. And thankfully the damn footage is still up. So now I tried to do this damn review. But streams for help. I should have been streaming for that. What the hell was I at? Oh, the lines of dialogue. I was talking about the lines of dialogue in this film. I don't know if Tom Holland wrote this or... There's a bit where... <laughs> the girl is trying to tell her mom what's going on. And the mom's not listening. So the girl says something to the effect of... Fine, don't believe me. Just wait until he kills you. <laughs> I mean, as a good thing to say to your mom. Or, uh... What was the other line? Love could sure do terrible things. Now it's all over. She says this when, and this was, again, Tom Holland, I need, I, I wish someone had uploaded that full interview with Tom Holland to see if he does answer these things. Did you write this part or not? Because what happens is she does get the Polaroid, she shows her mom, she confronts the guy, and then the stepdad pretty much grabs the mom and threatens her, I never loved you, I never loved you at all, you suck! <laughs> That's pretty much what he's saying. And then they stay in the house. You never see that they called the cops. You never saw that they tried to leave. Or even did anything in terms of protection. You think they like call the cops, hey, this guy threatened me, or this guy admitted he wanted to kill me, all this stuff? No. And they stay there. And then the lead girl's writing her diary saying, Love to sure do terrible things. Now it's all over. Why would you think it's over? You thought, well, the guy just left the house, now it's all over? It's all fine. Well, he left the house. What? And again, so lo and behold, they, the three of them come back. They tape the two, they put them in the basement. And I don't know why. Because apparently the idea is they're going to make it seem like a break in, kill them, and the stepdad got hurt in the midst of it. But why are they waiting? Why are they waiting like the whole night? Why don't you kill them now and then make it look like a break-in? What is stopping you? What's stopping you? Oh, because the movie would be over. Instead, oh, like the last 30-some minutes, it felt like it's just this BS where they're in the basement and then... At one point she tries to escape, but then she can't escape and she, turn, she does this thing to get the lights off, but it doesn't work. That get caught, that get put into the basement again. Then the lead tells the stepdad about your new girlfriend, how that girl and the guy are actually together and they're gonna screw you over. Okay, fine, you go ahead and you try to say some things to stir things up and see if you're right. And they do, I don't know if they're making waffles or pancakes or some other shit. Waffle House, Waffle, I don't know. Chicken Waffles, whatever the hell they're making. We, I wish it was Chicken Waffles. I'd love to have that now. But then the, the guy and the stepdad have a fight and the stepdad gets his ass hit. Which is funny because you think like the stepdad would be the main villain. The stepdad would be the actual full villain because he's the guy we've been following for most of the movie and he you would think would be the main villain to the end he really isn't 
<laughs> I said this is spoilers. I had a bunch of lollygagging bullshit around. Uh, the the kind of new boyfriend comes by. She tells him off. And somehow he knew. But that when she told him off. That said you suck. And you were crappy lay. And you can't have sex for shit. And you got a limp dick. Apparently that was his clue as to. Something's not right here. Let me go get my dad who's. I don't know if he's with the cop. I forget. Commissioner or cops. Something like that. She makes a plan as if it's Home Alone. Well, granted, this is before Home Alone. You ain't no Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street, I'll say that. They made this plan of you turn... Uh, was that there? No, she makes this plan of she don't set this thing up, and then... Yeah, you turn off the lights. I'll screw around. And... The... Of the three, the female goes down. She gets fried. Stepdad's looking around. And she she sets something up. So, oh, the gas. She let the gas loose. So, I'm not talking about a fart. But, might as well be. This stinks. This way, this stinks. The stepdad lights it up. He blows up. Oh, piece of the damn floor blows up and then the third guy the angry husband boyfriend of the the woman he gets stabbed in the hand he gets wounded he escapes then it's much later you think everything's fine and he comes back and she stabs him in the stomach and then she makes a phone call let me talk to the commission whatever now you'll believe me. <laughs> Very over dramatic music yet again. This movie was boring. It was badly acted. There was no suspense. There's no build up. You're thrust into things. You don't know who's who. Like you don't know what's going on. You don't know these characters. Well, I wouldn't say you don't know what's going on. You do, because she tells you what's going on. But it's like, it's almost as if the movie starts and we miss the first 20 minutes of the flick. And then the music, music is over dramatic. It's a lot of just kind of Nancy Drew bullshit looking around, looking around. There's never a doubt as to maybe he's not the a killer. Maybe she's crazy. There's never that doubt. And because there's never that doubt, then what suspense do you have? You're just waiting. Like, we as the audience member go, okay, well, she's so certain, and he is acting suspicious, so we're just waiting for things to drop, like a bad habit. And it takes way too damn long for that to happen. So there you go. But that's, that's screen for help. Terrible acting from pretty much all the cast. The mom was there. The mom was so so, but I thought the rest of the cast did a fairly bad job. Again, the most the guy I recognized the most is the guy who had a 30 second bit in Friday the 13th Part 5. Michael Winter shows he's not a horror film director, he's not a thriller director. Just stick to action films. I know he's passed away, but he sure just stuck with that. Tom Holland, he definitely would get better with Fright Night. I mean, Fright Night is a world of difference compared to this. So him deciding to direct. I guess that's the one good thing this this did. I got Tom Holland off his ass and said, I'm going to direct my strips. And then we got Fright Night, which is one of my favorite vampire films. So, uh, congrats on that, at least. That's the only positive thing I'd say about it. <laughs> but yeah, stream for help. Yeah. There ain't no help coming. Yeah. This movie really sucks. It just sucks. Got nothing else to say, man. Later. <laughs>